Love that. All right, let's pray and start our lesson. Father God, we thank you for this time together. We just ask your blessing upon it. We thank you for the book of 1 Peter. And Lord, may we just learn and grow from it. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. All right, 1 Peter, <laughs> chapter 3. Oh, not chapter 3, I'm sorry. 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 3. Uh, the title of our message is New Life. Now, last week, we finished up verse 2, finally, right? And if you remember, we first saw that Peter uh, gave mention to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And we know that as the Trinity. And we also looked at what it meant to be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And that means to be for us to be, what, set apart for God's glory, to be set apart. And then we finished up with the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. And we looked at Exodus chapter 24, if you remember, when Moses sprinkled the Israelite people with the blood from an animal sacrifice. He sprinkled it on the altar of God, and he sprinkled it on to the people. And we learned that was done because the people had done what? They had entered into a covenant with God. They had agreed that we are going to do whatever you say, Lord. We're going to follow your ways, all your commandments, and we agree with you. And we have seen that all through Israel's history, how they just kept that covenant, didn't they? No, no. Anyway, but that should give us all hope because God had what? Mercy on them. Even when we are faithless, God is faithful. Anyway, but because of that, we too have entered into, or not because of that, but we too have entered into a covenant with Jesus Christ. And he is, him being our Savior, and us being obedient to him, and making him our Lord of our lives, uh, is symbolic of us being sprinkled by his blood. Just as the Israelites were sprinkled by the blood in their covenant, we've been sprinkled by the blood of Christ and our covenant with him. And so that takes us to verse 3, where Peter takes us from uh, us entering into this covenant with God, and then we're going to see from verse 3 and on what we get. So there we are. We have this contract with God, right? And then a contract... There's, you know, there's, you know, there's, there's things that are expected of us, and this is what will be expected of God for us. And so now we're going to begin to see what is expected of God for us. What's the... don't, don't go that way. I'm the fish. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Anyway. So, there. Anyway, so verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, the first thing I want us to look at here is the word blessed. And there's the Greek word for it. Still on the screen? Good. Okay. Eulogitos. I guess that's how you say it. I'm not sure. I'm not Greek. But, you know, we get the word what? Eulogize or eulogy, which we see, you know, uh, somebody's going to give the eulogy at the, you know, the memorial or the funeral. And it means to speak well of, to celebrate by praising. Now, but this word in scripture is only used and applied to Jesus Christ and, and God the Father. Because why? Because only they are worthy of all praise and honor. It's only used in scripture, this word, for them. And Peter is, right, is rightly writing this here, for he is giving all praise and God to Christ for, only, for what only they could do. And that was to restore us back into a right relationship with them. And so in our lives, what has happened? We have gone from what? Before we were saved, we were completely separated from God to now being saved and set apart for him. We have been set, set apart for him. We have been sanctified. <clears throat> so because of that, we can say, 
what blessed be his name. We have been restored into a right relationship with him because of Christ. And the next words we see here are in our verse from today is our Lord, our Lord. Now, the first word, our, well, we all know that this word is, is like a personal word. And it's translated from the Greek word, ego. Ever heard of that word? Mm -hmm. He's got a big ego, doesn't he? Yeah. And Peter uses this word because as Christians, we all are part of the family of God. And it's we're all part of a personal relationship. We are a family. And then the next word is Lord, which means master. Master. And when we receive Christ as our Savior, part of the covenant that we have agreed to and entered into with him is on that we are saying, yes, Christ, you are now my Lord. You are now my master. Yeah, we don't like to say that, do we? Because we go back to ego. But it's a tough one at times, isn't it? But he is to be our Lord and master. But it gets better. Paul writes in Romans 1.1 1, 1 and Titus 1.1, 1, 1, he calls himself a bondservant of Christ. And Peter, in 2 Peter 1.1, 1, 1, he says the same thing, as well as James and James 1.1 1, 1, and Jude 1.1. 1, 1. They all call themselves bond servants. Bond servant. So, what is that? What is this bond servant of Christ? Well, I'm going to read something to you out of the uh, book of Exodus, verse 21, uh, chapter 21, verses 1 through 6. So, now, these are the judgments which shall be set before them. If you buy a Hebrew servant, he shall serve six years, and in the seventh, he shall go out free and pay nothing. If he comes in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he comes in married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master has given him a wife, and she has borne him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. But if the servant plainly says, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go free. Then his master shall bring him to the judges. He shall also bring him to the door uh, or to the doorpost. And his master shall pierce his ear with it all. And he shall serve him forever. He shall serve him forever. That's a bond servant. That's what a bond servant is. In short, a bond servant is a slave. Who has been set free but chooses not to be free. He chooses to still be a servant to his master. So get the picture here. A bond servant is a slave who has been purchased and set free. Sound familiar? We've all been purchased and set free from sin. But the slave says, thank you. I still want to serve you. I want to be your bond servant. I'm going to serve you for life. And that's what a bond servant is. It's a lifetime commitment. I'm sorry, I missed the part. But if what you read to us uh -huh. about um, the bond servant and he, his life and his kids, where, where did you read that? From? That is out of Exodus chapter 21, <clears throat> verses 1 through 6. Bond servant is a lifetime commitment. Calling Christ our Lord and Master, well then we need to us to say, hey, yeah, we're gonna be your bond servant. Because it needs to be a lifetime commitment. It's not I'm gonna be a Christian this week and next week I'm not. Okay? It's a lifetime <coughs> commitment. You know, we were slaves to sin. But we have been set free by Christ. And part of that means we put our faith in him 
making him our Lord. And if he's truly our Lord, then it's a no-brainer. We should be his bond servant. Next two words are abundant and mercy we find in our verse. And abundant can also be translated as great, and mercy can be translated as compassion. And it is because of Christ's great compassion for us that what? We are saved. We are saved. Romans 5, 8. That God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let's all read that one together. It's on the screen? Good. All right. But God demonstrates his own love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That is us receiving great compassion and abundant mercy. Which takes us to the heart of today's lesson. 1 Peter 1 3. According to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So according to his abundant mercy, he has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So what is Peter telling us here? What is he telling us here? Well, this word begotten us again, this word begotten can also be translated as new birth new birth. But then we see the word again. Now that should all remind us of another passage from the Bible, from the Gospel of John, that Vicki has for us, chapter 3, verses 5 through 7. Jesus answered, I assure you, unless someone is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Whatever is born of the flesh is flesh, and whatever is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I told you that you must be born again. We must be what, son, Vicki? Must be born again. Born again. We must be born again. Peter is telling us the same thing in today's verse, that we must be born again. But he also adds the words to a living hope. A living hope. And not just, it's not just a hope. It's a living hope. And Christ is our living hope. Now, we can have a lot of hope and a lot of things, can't we? I mean, I can hope, you know, I could buy a house or a new car. I hope I don't get COVID. I hope I don't get some other illness. I hope, I hope, I hope you fill in the blank. Right? Yep. But hoping is all fine. We've all hoped in things. I hope that Doreen would marry me, and she did. So that was <laughs> that was good, right? You know? But how many things have we hoped for that have never happened? Why? Because <laughs> Those aren't living hope. Christ, on the other hand, is our hope. He is our living hope. And it is because of the resurrection from the dead. It is because of the resurrection from the dead. He is risen. Mm -hmm. I know we're not in Easter time, but this is something we should celebrate all the time. Mm -hmm. And one thing that kind of bothers me uh, in Christian circles and Christianity is we love to talk about the cross. Well, Christ died for your sins. He shed his blood for you. And that is all true. But the cross is a symbol of what? Death. It's the resurrection. It's the resurrection. That's where the life is. Because without the resurrection, look what it says. Romans 5.12 tells us that sin and death came from Adam. Romans 5.21, though, tells us because of God's grace, 
We have eternal life through Christ. But 1 Corinthians 15, 14. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and our faith is also empty. Mm -hmm. If Christ has not risen, we have no life. And if there's no life, then we have no hope. We have no hope at all. Without the resurrection, there's no hope. All we're doing is putting our trust in a man who was a good man, but now he's dead. We would still be dead in our sins. If Christ doesn't conquer death, which is the ultimate penalty of sin, once Adam sinned, death entered in. That's the ultimate consequence of sin. So Christ had to conquer death to prove that who he is and to also give us that same life. We've been born again into new life and we have that living hope living in us. So, Buddha is not alive. Muhammad is not alive. So what other things do people put their trust and hope in? Free to answer. Money. Money. Man? Money. 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 Yeah. You can't take that with you, can you? No. Yeah. You come into this world with nothing, you'll leave with nothing. That's a good one. What else? Themselves. Themselves, yes. People say the universe. Oh, yeah. Mother Nature. Yeah. 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 Mother Nature. Yeah. We just take good care of this planet. Yeah, somehow or another, we're all going to just live, to live forever, right? Something from the nature comes Yeah. 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 She gets credit for everything, and I never knew where she came from. Yeah. 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 Amazing, but yet God gets to blame for everything. Mm -hmm. Something happens. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Well, what are the things that people put their hope and trust in? You know? Yeah, you know, the, what is money, the job, my the relationships. Is, my hope is they live a good life, mm -hmm. that then they'll get to go to heaven. Yes. And if they're good to people. Yes, yeah, so if they're good enough, you'll make it. Yes, sir. As strange as it may sound, a lot of people put their hope in government. Government's yes. going yes. government's to make my life better. <laughs> Congress is going to make my life better. Absolutely, yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of our people put their trust in Satan, and Satan has a Bible. It's yes. called Satan's Bible. I see. <clears throat> yes. It's scary. It is very scary. I started reading the, just the forward, and I had to put it down. Oh, absolutely. It's just something else. Absolutely. Yeah, a lot of a lot of isms out there, and false religions and things, and. Uh, but, yeah, you know, we have a living home. I have a sister-in-law who's very Catholic. Yes. And I was, I mentioned something that was in the Bible one time. She said, no, it isn't. Oh, and I said, well, give me your Bible and I'll show you. And she brought me her Bible. I couldn't show her. Because it had words said that mine didn't. Hmm. And Jim could explain it better than me, but, but, uh, I finally found what I wanted to know to prove to her that Jesus was what he said he was. And I said, all you have to do is read the Bible and pray yourself. You don't need all this superfluous stuff. Exactly. And she said, no, that's not what I need. Because our, what did they call that guy that stands up? The priest. <clears throat> the priest is going to stand there for me. Yeah. And I died he was Wow. Man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she said, I don't have to pray. I don't have to read the Bible because he does that for me. Wow. 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 That's, well, that's a really lazy way to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, we're talking about putting trust in, in government. Yeah, people put their trust in you know a religious figure, you know, yeah. man, <coughs> priest or pope. Yeah. I said he, you know, he's going to be standing there trying to talk to Jesus and he's going to not just send him to hell. He's going to forgive that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that I, what Mom said uh, about trusting in self and. I think the reason we trust in self is because we have too high an opinion, opinion of self and human nature in general. Because when it says that according to Jesus, you know, his great mercy, we don't we need to understand that the reason God had to have compassion on us is because not only were we sinners. We were dead in sin. When have you ever seen a dead person be able to do anything for themselves or anybody else? That's a great point, Vicki. I mean, so it's it's we we need to understand that is why we can't make a choice for God. He has to open our hearts so we see Him, and we make we can only then make a choice for Him because we're dead. God has to make us alive. And that's why it's so important to understand that he chooses us and he loves us before we love him. We can't love him. And, and it, there's all kinds of scripture that testifies to the fact that he has to. So, I mean, if you, we, we can talk about being sinners, but if we really focus in on it, the truth, you know, he gives us a living hope and that is the opposite of what we want. We're yeah. we can't do it. Okay. Let's pray. Um, Father God, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for this lesson. We thank you that you are our living hope. And we just praise you and thank you for that. And we just lift up the rest of this day to you and pray that we just walk in your truth. So in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children.